In this video, you are gonna learn how to paint glow effect just like this one. Painting OSL comes down to three main principles. The first one is that the source and lit parts around it are brighter than those in shade. Looking at this glowing magical mushroom right here, the surrounding area is lighter than the rest. At the same time, this mushroom is the lightest thing on this miniature, and the further you go from it, the less light you see. With that said, we can establish one additional rule. The further you go from your light source, the less light you get. And finally, the resulting effect is shaped by emitted light but also by the color of the object. When we look at this leg, we can tell that there are both colors, cyan and red. The further you go, the more red it appears. But as you get closer to this mushroom, there is more blue. Reading some articles online, I have found two additional rules. Light source is brighter than reflected light, and also light moves in straight lines. Both of these are correct, but number four is kinda part of number two, and number five seems obvious. For example, the unlit parts of this squig will have basically no cyan anywhere, because it's simply not exposed. But there is some room for deception. For example, this horn is painted as if it's exposed, but in reality it's blocked by the face by a millimeter or two. Even so, I decided to paint it for the illusion. But let's start from the beginning. Because the final effect is influenced by the underlying color as well as the light source, I painted most of the miniature already. I intentionally left the base black and bottom of the miniature is darker because it will be easier to light it up. Usually before painting anything on my miniatures, I like to take a photo of them against the light source to identify all the reflections. This works well if there is one main light source, but in this case we also have to identify reflections from the second light source, the mushroom. Since light moves in straight lines, you can usually kinda tell which parts are exposed and which are not. I have used my RGB light and a flashlight to get similar angle and see which parts are gonna be lit. This is not perfect by any means and the light is not gonna be as intense, but at least you can get a rough idea. Obviously the leg is gonna be one of the lightest parts together with the lower lip. You cannot really see this in these photos, but the light doesn't reach all the way up here because of how the mushroom is placed. Starting off, I have covered entirety of the base with dark green paint. I have mixed in some matte black so it doesn't shine and as we go, you will see that having a dark base is fantastic for OSL. I always like to cover the light source with pure white because it's gonna be one of the brightest spots on the miniature. I have also decided to mix in some white into the green and sketch some initial reflections on these mushrooms. Keep in mind that the closer mushrooms will have more intense reflections and the more distant one right here will be darker. I also specifically highlighted the edges since those catch most of the light. Now this step is not necessary because you could go straight for the blue reflections instead, but if you do it like this, it will keep more of its original color. Otherwise, you could do the same thing I'm gonna do for the leg and the face. Once I paint some nice reflections and the light source is fully covered in white, it's time to start glazing. I simply thin down my cyan paint and start covering the mushroom. I plan to keep pure white on the tip and as we approach the gills, it will get darker. If I left most of the mushroom pure white, it could be confusing. So choosing a single part of the mushroom to be the glowy part is the best option. If you feel like you made it too dark, you can simply mix in some white and start glazing again. It might take a few tries and going back and forth between the darker layer and lighter layer, but that's always the case when you try to make something smooth. I didn't mention this yet, but it also matters which color of the OSL are you going for. In this case, I am using just white and cyan, and I would always recommend going for turquoise or cyan rather than blue, because you don't lose as much saturation. If you were to use basic blue, you would have to mix in a lot of white and blue saturation, so the resulting effect wouldn't look as good. Cyan by itself is higher value color and therefore you don't need as much white so it looks way better. Going for yellow, orange or green OSL is in my opinion even easier because in all of these cases you can use yellow as the source color and you don't lose any saturation. Using fluo paints is also an option and I did that for this miniature as well as this one. But painting OSL without any of these is not a problem. I didn't even find any good blue fluo paint anyway. When I am finally satisfied with the mushroom it's time to paint the reflections. First, let's start with the base. Even here, the same principles apply. As we approach the glowing mushroom, the light becomes brighter and as we go further, it gets dimmer. I wouldn't recommend dry brushing for OSL, but this grainy surface kinda needs it. This process is messy because of this texture, but in the end, it will be just fine. Sometimes it might happen that you stretch the reflection too much 
and in that case simply go to your underlying color and give it a few glazes to make it darker which is exactly what i am doing here i have also used the glazing method for caps of other mushrooms the values are already sketched there so just a few glazes will do the trick adjusting the intensity of reflections is done here as well so i am making sure that the more distant mushrooms are less bright than the closer ones i also add a bit more white to highlight the edges as i proceed to sketch some of the lightest reflections on this quick it's immediately obvious why keeping a lot of dark parts on a miniature is key to painting osl if the entire miniature is very bright and the light is diffused you won't really see any glow let's take for example this scarlet witch miniature the environment is supposed to be well lit by a diffused light and therefore there isn't as much room for reflections from the secondary light source which are these magical things. On the other hand, when you make your miniature way darker, the light source will stand out. If you need another proof of this, simply look at the difference of me with and without the main light. You can make the argument that I made the skin and the helmet too bright for it to make sense, and you are 100% correct. Theoretically, it would make more sense if the top of the miniature was a fair bit darker. But since most of the blue reflections will be down there, where it's darker anyway, it can work like this as well. After all, in miniature painting, it's all about over exaggeration to create an illusion going further it's the same story over and over again highlighting the edges glazing over majority of the exposed parts with pure turquoise and adding more reflections some of the more subtle reflections will really sell this effect for that reason i painted even quite distant parts but just a little bit there is also a difference how shiny and matte materials reflect the light so for example even though the helmet and the dagger are quite far away there will be a noticeable reflection on both of these however i really try to be careful the further away i get from the light source so i don't ruin it otherwise i continue glazing lighter paint when i am close to the mushroom and switching to just turquoise as i go further if you feel like you spread the reflections too far you can always fix it with darker underlying color with osl many times less is more and if you are not sure if it works or not progress slowly. Either way, if you respect the rules we set in the beginning, it should work just fine. I decided to make the light source even brighter and I do that by adding gloss varnish into my white. This makes it smoother and brighter as well. Now when we look at this miniature on a dark background, the effect is even more prominent. If you have never tried to paint anything like this, I know that it might seem complicated, but it really isn't. If you stick to the key principles and take your time, you can definitely do it. Also, it might be a good idea to save this video to a playlist so you can come back to it later. That's it, subscribe if you haven't already and see you in the next one. Bye. But, but since most of the blue... I didn't mention this yes. I didn't even find... I didn't even... <laughs> screw it. <sighs>